G'day guys and a big welcome to my first listener of the CompTIA A Plus certification and today I'm going to be talking about the BIOS UFE if you want to pronounce it like that so uh, if you haven't seen my introduction video already feel free to check that out and uh, that will go through a little bit about uh, the, the course and what I intend to cover so um, yeah today a bit about the BIOS UFE uh, so we've got the BIOS which is sort of the old school version of the uh, I guess very basic computer configuration and you've got the UFE, which is sort of the more modern uh, setup where you can actually interact with your mouse as well and uh, get sort of more detailed information, security features as well, uh, also enhanced. But um, without further ado, we'll delve into some of the BIOS and UFE chips. So what we've got here on our left-hand side here is uh, EEPROM, as you can see here. You don't have to remember too many acronyms in the A+. But the EEPROM stands for Electronically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. It's a massive tongue twister there. But essentially, this is where all the BIOS configurations are sort of made from. Um, you've also got the CMOS battery here, which is where you can actually make uh, configuration changes. And they are essentially saved here. And if you take this battery out, if you have like a supervisor password or something like that, uh, one method you can do is you can adjust the jumpers on the hard drive if it's really old, <laughs> like an IDE. Um, another way, you can also take this battery out for 5-10 minutes and that can also erase any sort of passwords and configurations that were set with the BIOS. And right here you've got a bit of NVRAM, so that stands for Non-Volatile Random Access Memory. And essentially all the changes made through the CMOS are uh, saved here and referenced uh, in the non-volatile memory. Essentially, these these guys all interact together in order to, I guess, uh, get have access to BIOS through here, make the changes through the CMOS, and then all the changes are saved to NVRAM non-volatile memory. So, looking into the firmware update side of things. And as you probably notice, I try and teach more through pictures and uh, just sway my words in a way that uh, makes the pictures stand out a little bit. But sometimes you'll need to do BIOS updates, and very rarely will you need to, or if your computer's not in a good shape. Um, so we've got the photo here, which is, I guess, um, flashing the BIOS, as we call it. So firmware, in a nutshell, is essentially any kind of hardware that... Uh, a certain software inside of it that isn't really, it's basically read only. You can't really do much to it. You can update it, i.e. flash it, but essentially you're literally reading from it and it's sort of what holds it together. You've got firmware and then you've got software. Software is obviously much more flexible and you've got firmware and pretty much anything that has electronics um, as part of it and has some kind of, I guess, mechanical system there. And I'll go to my website uh, where I can find the BIOS updates. Um, so essentially I've got a Lenovo here and we've got uh, the BIOS here and also got a bit of a readme. So essentially how it'll work is you will download a file and then have put it onto a USB and then the USB will have the, I guess the configuration files you boot from the USB and you update the BIOS sort of through that way and um, through the BIOS itself. And uh, don't turn your computer off and hope there's no power outages, otherwise you're in a little bit of trouble. To find the BIOS version, as you may have seen in some of my notes, you can go here into the command prompt. You can go run CMD, press enter. I've just got it open for ease of use. You can type in WMIC space BIOS space get space SM BIOS, BIOS version and that will give you where we're at so version 2.09 and another way you can also check MS Info 32 will also give you the BIOS version as well as you can see version 2.09 and that matches up there very nicely and we'll move on to some BIOS security UFE security so obviously, first off the top we've got here, we've got uh, passwords. We can set a few passwords here. We can set a supervisor password, which is the main one. So that would mean you need to put a password in to get into the BIOS. And you can also set a computer password as well, which means you'd need to set the password 
or sorry, uh, you'd set the password and then you would also have to enter the password in to get into the computer before anything else. So that's a really good feature if you're, well, don't want anyone to get into it at all. But as I said earlier, if you've got, uh, obviously most computers have a CMOS battery, you can take that out for 10, five, 10 minutes and uh, that'll generally take away the password. But if you don't know that, uh, that can be a tough challenge to break through the password. And then we've got another method here, TPM, which is Trusted Platform Module. And this is essentially sort of a crypto processing I guess, schedule whereby it um, basically tries to have integrity with the system and ensure nothing's being tampered with uh, between when Windows shuts down and turns back on again. And we've also got uh, bit, uh, I guess, drive encryption as well. Uh, BitLocker for Windows is one of those uh, guys which essentially if someone just takes your laptop away from you and uh, they need to get access to files on your computer if they are encrypted it would mean that they would need a password or some kind of security uh, i guess mechanism to uh, get access to these files it's generally through a password and if they are not sure what it is they can't get access to the files so drive encryption very important to keep your data secure in case of any mishaps like that Possibly ransomware as well, but uh, not not won't go into that today. And we've got Secure Boot as well, which is also another mechanism whereby it can basically, I guess, uh, keep anything bad happening that shouldn't be booting, even to a point where it uh, doesn't allow you to boot from USBs. Most of the time, at least in my experiences. But another thing too, it can stop any malware viruses from getting access to, uh, I guess, the bootloader and causing dramas there. So Secure Boot's a, a really good security feature to uh, stop anything bad from happening in that regard. And you've also got Lojack as well, which is pretty similar to TPM as well. So demonstration time. I'll use my camera for this, uh, my physical camera, and um, show you guys a little bit of what to expect. So basically how to get into the BIOS, uh, how to get any information about any components, configurations and also monitoring so a bit of that fan speed temperatures and those sorts of things so without further ado i'll get into the demonstration for you guys and show you what to do next and here we are with our little bios tutorial how to sort of get into the bios and everything like that i've just got my lights up here thought it'd be easier off the camera or quicker for me to do it so essentially what you do hold down your power button to turn the laptop on and with my computer in particular, you need to press function and F2 very, very quickly, which I'll do now. So I've got to mash the key at the right time. Yep, cool. So here we are at the setup utility. So essentially the BIOS here, we've got, uh, I guess, a lot of information about the computer itself. So we've got down the bottom there, um, I guess, help. You can um, use F1 with the function key and changing values uh, it's function f5 and f6 and that will um, move through um, values i suppose and we've got uh, save and exit as well which is an option once you've saved the configurations you want to save you go function f10 and if you want it back to the how it was you can go function f9 i know it was really silly having to press function then the f key but anyway Furthermore, looking at the information there, so it says exactly what the laptop is, what BIOS version we've got as well, the serial number as well, which is a really handy tool to have, the processor, which is essentially the brains of the computer, where it says CPU, Intel Core i3, 1.7 gigahertz, not the best in the world, and system memory is the random access memory, uh, this basically stores program, basically programs and the operating system and all that kind of stuff uh, in running memory. And we've also got the uh, the hard drive we've got as well, which is an SSD in my case. And also have an optical disk drive there, as it says ODD, which is a Matisha. And Windows is the operating system. So if we move into the configuration there, we have the time which we can change with the function F5 and F6 keys. We also have wireless LAN disabled from the BIOS, which is interesting. We've also got a power beep, virtual technology, BIOS backflash. And also hotkey mode, which I believe is to do with the functions. And essentially you can go down the list and it'll explain what the things do basically. So you can go down on the left hand, uh, the right hand side, you can see it changes and tells you what those functions actually do, whether they're enabled or disabled. We go into security as well. 
we've got the administrator password, user password, hard drive password. So there's a few passwords there you can set in order to be a little bit more secure and not allow anyone to just willy-nilly access whatever they want. And moving into the boot menu, we've got uh, boot mode, so legacy support, I think UEFI is the other option, and the boot priority as well, which will go through what takes precedence first. So you've got uh, your, you've got your DVD drive, you've got uh, your LAN, which is your network, and you've also got your hard drive. And USB boot there is enabled, so I can boot from a USB, install an operating system, or run a live CD and go from there kind of thing and as we can see legacy support goes down to the bottom there where it says legacy and it will tell us what the boot order is and once you've finished with looking through the BIOS be very careful with any changes you make and as with mine in particular it's function F10 to save the changes and exit and that is pretty much it on the BIOS so I hope you enjoyed that demonstration and this video, first video of the course. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, big shout out and thank you for joining in. Uh, feel free to subscribe away to get access to this course. Uh, just a brilliant course we're putting together and really want to educate you guys on the A+. And ensure you can get the best results possible. And feel free to comment any questions down below or any, any thoughts, queries you have. More than welcome to have a bit of a look and uh, get back to you guys on that. Subscribe away, like the video, that'd be amazing. I'll catch you guys next time.